uh, in July 31st, 1984, he was killed. Mm -hmm. And he was he was killed execution style in his home. So it was, you know, two to the back, one to the head. Mm -hmm. So it was very it was very professional. Yep. And so the, the story as it went was James Eichhorst mm -hmm. was the manager of Corby's Tavern at the time. He was young, he was 27, mm -hmm. and he he had to go to his boss's house, but he was supposed to meet him back at Corby's later mm -hmm. that night. So he walks in there, he's met with a gun to the back of his head. Mm -hmm. He's blindfolded mm -hmm. with a pillowcase, mm -hmm. as he testified, mm -hmm. and he's tied to a chair. Right. So when Harold Rowley doesn't, you know, he knows something's up, goes to check on him, goes back to his house, and oh. from there, you know, he's ambushed and he's killed. Yep. He's executed. You heard that there. That's Judene Bayangana talking about an article that he wrote detailing the 1984 murder of the original Corby's Tavern owner. More of that later, but first. Thank you for listening to another episode of Round the Bend Now and Then. My name is Matt Emery, and I'm a local history nerd. My main mission in this podcast, as well as other Round the Bend material, is to create engaging content that shares how intertwined the South Bend and Mishawaka area's past is to our present. In the podcast, I interview local leaders, business owners, and community members to help tell their stories because their stories help tell the story of South Bend and Mishawaka. Before we get into the interview, I just have a few announcements and favors. Announcement. All of our previous audio episodes are now uploaded to YouTube, and as each one is released, they'll also be available on YouTube as well. In addition to the audio episodes, I'll continue to create visual content as well. I currently have three different video episodes, each with historical pictures, maps, dynamic narration by yours truly, and even on-the-scene videos and reporting, also by yours truly. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel, at Round the Bend Now and Then, subscribe, and check out the content. A few favors? As always, please be sure to hit the download, like, or subscribe button on whatever podcast app that you listen to us on. Follow us on social media, at Round the Bend Pod, or at Round the Bend 574 on Twitter, Round the Bend Now and Then on Facebook, and all of our links are in the show notes as well. My last favor is to please pass on the good word about the content. Now, here is the introduction setting up another interview that helps tell the story of South Bend and Mishawaka. A few months ago, I received a message on Twitter from an at ND the source. He said he loves our Twitter content and the podcast, but then he asked if I had ever heard the story behind the 1984 murder of the original Corby's Tavern owner. I obviously knew that the Corby's that we currently know and love on LaSalle Avenue wasn't open until the 1990s. So the Corby's Tavern that he was referring to was located on Eddie and Corby Street from the 1960s through the mid-1980s. Turns out, at ND The Source and his brothers have a website, www.thefamilypsm.com, where they share their articles, music, videos, pictures, and more. His name is Diodene Bayangana, and he's a 21-year-old young man raised proudly in the south side of South Bend. He said he discovered the story behind the murder recently, and then started diving in and researching public accounts through newspapers and court documents. What he discovered was one layer on top of another. One rabbit hole after another. He wrote an article titled The Midwest Connection, based on what he learned. You can check the article's link out in the show notes as well. I suggested that we meet up to record and try to share this story. And once I started my own research, I knew we had to share it. Because, oh my goodness, there are so many tentacles and layers of intrigue. And speaking of all those tentacles, it's hard to get deep, deep, deep into everything in a half hour or 45 minute podcast episode. But you can read his article for a much more detailed account of the many tentacles connected to this story. Before we dive into our talk, obviously murder is something that is absolutely beyond tragic. And we mean no harm, we mean no disrespect to anyone involved in this story. 
We simply researched public news accounts and tried to share the story as respectfully as we could. Also, you'll obviously hear the name Corby's a lot throughout. Just remember, as I mentioned earlier, the Corby's we speak of and the Corby's we love now are not the same bar at all. There's zero relation other than the name. I hope you enjoy listening to my chat with Diedene Bayangana. I hope you find the story as intriguing as we do. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Where'd you go to high school and all that good stuff? Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm uh, born and raised in South Bend. Okay. From the jump. Uh, been on the southeast side my whole life. Uh-oh. Um <laughs> Went to Riley. Okay. Uh, so, you know, that's A Riley side, Wildcat. That's my side of town. That's my side. And it's, it's kind of funny. It's like when you're in high school, you know, you just, you kind of be cynical. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just kind of like, ah, you know, you don't really care. But as you, as I, as I get older, I kind of like, when I meet other people go to Riley. It's just kind of like, a, you're yeah. like, ah, you know, it's cool. You went, you, you went to Riley yeah. as well. But yeah, so, you know, like the side of town, you know, as I gotten older, mm-hmm. just been out of high school, uh, you know, just, you know, a few years, mm-hmm. four years now, um, just taking more and more interest into local history. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, but I, you know, I'm into film. Uh-huh. I'm into uh, writing about film, writing about music, mm-hmm. uh, analyzing it. Um and just, uh, yeah, producing content on it, uh-huh. just uh, uh, video essays, um, uh, pieces, uh, just, you know, analyzing film and music and all of that. So, uh, all right. Well, hey, you mentioned a website. You mentioned writing. You guys, ha- you have one. It's www.thefamilypsm.com. People Saving Minds. Is yeah. That- so PSM, uh, it's a, we're a artist collaboration. Okay. So uh, we're all family. Uh, mm-hmm. We're all brothers. Uh, so my oldest brother, he produces music, uh, uh the engineers, okay. mixes, uh, Ghana G on the family PSM. Um, my, my other brother, he, uh, he makes physical art. He makes mixed media art collages. Okay. Uh, he had a piece in the South Bend art museum. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're always out just at shows at Lang lab, um, the Dodge pyramid show, okay. the Rocky button, um, just, you know, wherever there's a place for artists, mm-hmm. PSM is always trying to get involved. And what I provide to the family PSM on the website is the blog section. Okay. So I'm always trying to just keep my eye towards film, music, right. trying to share what I see, whether it be some analysis, whether uh-huh. it be uh, the qualities that make the art what it is. Yeah. You know, my 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 uh, you know my statement is always for the love of art. You know, yeah. I'm always just trying to uh, uh, take take what I see analyze it bring it to the masses uh-huh. and share that share that love um so yeah so that's what the uh, the family psm is about you know it's a, it's a mixed collaboration yeah. you know come for the music come for the art come for a read that's cool and uh, that's yeah. neat that is neat you mentioned um <laughs> you mentioned corby's and then you also mentioned uh doing some analysis on on some fiction work you know through 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 writing this seems like fiction, this story on the, the Corby story. It seems like fiction. You had reached out to me and asked if you ever heard about a murder of the owner of Corby's. And I hadn't. I, I mean, just barely something. But but man, as soon as you sent me those articles, I mean, I was, I was hooked, man. I had to dive in a lot deeper. And so then you had taken what you had learned from all those articles and then you wrote your own article so i guess i'll start with how i even Let's stumbled upon this. so i'm i'm really into to mob history yep you know the history of the cosa nostra uh-huh. organized crime in america you know i just find it very fascinating and a lot of the i don't want to say the love but it, you know, a lot of the infamy, it's fine a lot, a lot a lot of the fascination goes absolutely to, to new york yep you know, the five families the five of families york. so i you know in it was just south bend sort of being in the the orbits of chicago right, i was right. like you know let me look into if there's any relation at all between the Chicago outfit and South Bend. So I was just, you know, running through, literally just started with Google, just search yep. Chicago outfit, South Bend, see if I could hit on any, uh-huh. you, know, you know, court records. Sometimes things will be public, absolutely public domain. You can find right. a record online. Uh, you know, some, you know, if there was any South Bend Tribune articles or anything, Chicago Tribune. Um, and so I stumbled upon a uh, court record. It was uh, not a court record. It was a Chicago Tribune headline uh-huh. saying a uh, ex cop was linked to an Indiana killing. Uh-huh. And from there, that was the first threat. Antennas went up. Exactly. My, my dog ears perked yep. up. And 
from there, it's get it's it, it, it details the owner of a Corby's bar, okay, Corby's Tavern, yep, being killed in 1984. Uh huh. And I and I see, <laughs> I, I, and, and it says ex cop. So so that was the the first thing that that was that, that first me. little nugget that just that had you wanting to dive deeper. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And for our listeners, most of our listeners are in the area. We think of Corby's. We think of LaSalle and Niles Avenue. Corby's was originally called, like you said, what Corby's, Corby's Tavern, Tavern. Corby's Tavern. And it was on Corby and Eddy Street. And that was, and another, it, that was before my time. So that, uh, it had me thinking. Yep. I was like, okay, so there was, there was another Corby's. Mm-hmm. And I, even you know on the sign of the new one that's completely unrelated uh-huh. from this story, it says established in 1990. Right. So right. I'm just like, okay, so what, what is this going on in the, in the early 80s? Yep. And so, uh, so yeah, and, and from you, you, mm-hmm. you were informed you know, mm-hmm. the, the original Corby's. You probably know just, you know, that's that was more of your time. So you, yep. Um, well, the original Corby's, um, it, 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 the murder was in 84. Mm-hmm. So I was six. So I didn't get to drink there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, it's good. I remember um, even hearing stories of a, a friend of mine. Their mother was just saying how mm-hmm. it was uh, during the filming of Rudy. Yep. That it was it was, it was uh, there was just a lot of buzz around it at the uh-huh. time. So so I was kind of confused. So I was like, okay, so you had the filming of Rudy's, and then you had uh, this original location. Mm-hmm. So putting it all together, you had. Corby's Tavern, which yep. was in the old Five Points section uh-huh. of Notre Dame, and that's sort of uh, Eddie Street Commons now. Yeah, so you're really exactly right. Where the original Corby's is, is about right where Trader Joe's is now, right in that area, right. exactly. So there, there stood uh, Corby's Tavern, mm-hmm. um, and that was owned by a man named Harold Rowley Jr. Okay, Harold Rowley Jr. Colorful character, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. Colorful, very colorful character indeed. Uh, he, <laughs> the, the, to, there was one quote: um, "Eloquent, cooperative, and mild mannered." That I found a South Bend Tribune quote. Uh, that that was how he presented himself at meetings, okay. uh, liquor board licensing yeah. mis- meetings. Uh-huh. That he was, you know, very. Uh, uh, he was he was there quite often because because <laughs> there was a lot of controversy that ensued with his establishment. But uh, being of the location that, mm-hmm. that Corby's Tavern was in, uh, there was a lot of underage drinking there. That was right. a problem. Yep. You know, you had these big game days. You had just a sea of mm-hmm. students flooding in. Sometimes they would intermix. And apparently his policies, you know, weren't that uh, that good at weeding those kids and out. And, you know, so, it, in, in, in all fairness to Rowley and Corby's at that time, the other bars used to get in trouble, too, as far as with underage drinking also. It, yeah, you know, was, I did so, find some quotes of there was uh, the, a representative of the uh, India. It, it, does, it doesn't exist in this current form now, but the Alcohol Beverage Board okay. at the time, there was yeah. a representative who said, I have to admit it was probably a problem trying to control that. Yeah. So there was a quote of him. They, they kind of were aware mm-hmm. there was a problem in that area. It wasn't just him, but the man himself, Harold yep. Rowley. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about some of Harold. <laughs> Harold is he's quite a guy so back uh, just to hit the first uh, business venture he got in I found uh, in 1966 he got into the uh, furniture wholesale business okay he had a business out in Elkhart it was mm-hmm. a wholesale firm and he was sued by a, a carpet manufacturer out of Georgia uh-huh. for about $17,000 in bad checks according to one South Bend Tribune report and which is about 160000 insane now. You so, wrote that in your article too. Yeah, it, it was just one little detail that sort of show his uh, what the uh, South Bend uh, detective said. At, uh, he described it as a cash flow problem. Yeah, that he had. He was known to drive around. Um, it, it, one, the the article did say he was known to drive around in a big car. Uh huh. Have you know f- fancy clothes. And and on a personal note, I could corroborate that with an old coworker. Okay. I had, just to. Old regular Joe yeah. worked at him at the grocery store. Uh-huh. He worked in produce. This man, nice. he just had a lot of interesting stories to tell. Uh-huh. He'd been around. He'd been around the block. A few I times. love that kind of stuff. It's man. crazy. I love and hearing stuff like what, that. From <laughs> what's fascinating about this man is he, uh, before I'd even wrote anything, uh-huh. when I was just getting into some details, I'd asked him about this, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew Harold Rowe. I knew this That's guy." That's crazy. And, and he he said details 
about the murder yeah. that I only found in, in court records. Okay. So I knew that this guy had to legit. He, yeah. He he, he, had, he had to 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 uh, really been around at the time. Right. And so he was saying the same thing about Harold Rally. He said he would drive around in a Cadillac. Okay. He said you know he would have a fur coat, but he would never really back up this money. He was kind of a guy who played it fast and loose. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so there were reports of him getting shot at on Mishawaka uh-huh. Avenue in the early 70s. <laughs> there were unconfirmed reports of a drive-by shooting attempt in the Twickenham Hills neighborhood, uh-huh. which, I mean, if any of you know the Twickenham Hills, it, you, it's, yeah. quite, no. it's quite uh, uh, yeah. crazy to, to just imagine. Well think, of, well, think of it, though. He he was killed in Twickenham. Eventually, he was yeah. murdered in Twickenham we'll Hills. See. Then, if he was shot at in Twickenham Hills, that was not a random shooting mm-hmm. <laughs> it's I'd, not like he was walking down the skid row of a street you know and got capped at even you know? with mishawaka avenue yeah, i mean river right park yes. is is not no. really something that you you would expect that to no. happen no and so uh at the time of his death he was going through a divorce mm-hmm. with his wife rose um and the two had a stepson so there have been uh there was a, a quote from uh police officer, South Bend police officer Mm -hmm. and the South Bend Tribune who wished to remain anonymous. He was saying how throughout the early 70s, he was frequently called to the Rowley household for domestic disturbances. Mm -hmm. He said he saw Rowley strike his son Mm -hmm. in front of him, which is a detail that may come, the seeds may, you know, come later to play in the story. Uh, So that sort of can give some context to to who he is. Now, he also claimed to have known uh, Tony Spilotro. Tony the Ant Spilotro, yeah. Tony the Ant. So if anybody is familiar with the movie Casino, Casino. 1995, yep. Scorsese, personally, I think it's better than Goodfellas. I mean, classic. it's classic. You, you, really, they're, they're both classic. great films, but I, I you know, but um, uh, Tony the Ant, he was a hothead. Yep. He, you know, he was crazy. He was uh, disrupting a lucrative operation. Uh-huh. So they had him killed because yep. he was bringing a lot of heat to them. So this was a figure that Harold Rowley was claiming to have known. Right. So that's just an interesting little yeah. detail that sort of colors his story. Right. But in uh, uh, in July 31st, 1984, he was killed. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was killed execution style in his home. So it was... You know, two to the back, one to the head. Mm-hmm. So th- it was very, mm-hmm. it was very professional. Yep. And so the the story, as it went, was James Eichhorst mm-hmm. was the manager of Corby's Tavern at the time. He was young; he was twenty seven, mm-hmm. and he he had dinner with his boss Harold Rowley earlier in the mm-hmm. evening, and he needed to run back to his place. Now, it's interesting that the, the why he ran to his house, yeah. it changes in each yep. article. It changed, but uh-huh. the, I, I chose the one that was the, that he testified yes. with, but yes. some say he went there to quote, pick up files, uh-huh. what, quote, quote, went there to change his clothes, uh-huh. went there to take a shower. Yep. There's a lot of different things that he went there for, but he had to go to his boss's house, but he was supposed to meet him back at Corby's later mm-hmm. that night. When he goes in there, oh, could you imagine walking into your friend's house and then this? They, I would be. I'd I mean, be I so would. Sh- I'd poop my pants right then and there. <laughs> I'd. I'd just be so mad that I'm just like, why am I getting wrapped up in your business? Yes. So he walks in there. He's met with a gun to the back of his head. Mm-hmm. He's blindfolded mm-hmm. with a pillowcase mm-hmm. as he testified, and he's tied to a chair. Right. And 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 and. Could, put off could you room. imagine? I mean, just walking in randomly, you get a pillowcase over your head, your handcuffs tied to a chair. Yeah, so so James A. Corst, he's an innocent bystander. He yep. gets tied up. He's put in a room. And he described it. He describes the fear in testimonies, yes. different interviews. Like, like it, it was seemed hours and lifetime hours long. Is what he and, said. Yeah, and just yeah. the, the fear would be insane. You don't, you know, you don't know Unreal. what you're... What you're your life is in the hands of these people. Absolutely. You, and just the confusion too. Absolutely. <laughs> the utter confusion. Yeah. But, uh, so when Harold Rowley doesn't, you know, he knows something's up, goes to check on him, goes back to his house, and oh, from there, you know, he's ambushed and he's killed. Yep. He's executed. Right away, pretty much. Am I right, right away, Like, yeah. Eichhorst ended up testifying, like, pretty much as soon as he came in the door, it was it was done. Yeah, yeah, and so... Because he could hear. Mm-hmm. 
exactly so and so he said so because he just didn't know what's happening until he heard the shots yeah. he was he was he said he was waiting for hours so mm -hmm. you know once they got them you know once he got the true intended target harold rally there right. you know shot him so james a course he testified that once he heard the shots and the assailants were flaying broke free from the chair yeah ran out saw his boss there lying on the floor uh -huh. confirmed what had happened and again reports kind of changed yeah. some say he they took he took harold rally's car drove it to the corner of uh, Lincoln Way and Twickingham. Uh -huh. Some say he ran over there, but he ended up being found on Mishawaka Avenue flagging down a cop car. He, it was only uh, about three blocks from where we're recording it right now. It was Mishawaka Avenue in Twickenham. In fact, all of this has taken place. Literally, I, all within a couple <laughs> miles of here. All of that has where this has taken place. <laughs> I've run by on jogs. I've drive by daily. Uh -huh. It's a Ooh. place I'm very familiar yeah. with, which which truly you know yeah makes you uh, really uh -huh. feel more connected to it, which is kind of why I was more fascinated into it, just that and you mentioned, hometown um, relation. mentioned jogging past and everything in the, in the neighborhood being close. It was to our listeners. I'm not going to give the exact address. Because when I, I posted it on Reddit, somebody asked the house and I, I feel, I don't want to, I'm not going to dox the person. There's, there's, yeah, you, I will say, look it up you, folks. If, if you can, it's out there. If, if you dig into it, yeah, some of the sources easily. I cite, you can find them. But uh, if you ever drove past York the, Road, folks, York Road. If you this drive by nice that, if you drive York by that Road. fire station that the they're doing the construction station, on, yeah. you know it's it's right by there. It's amazing. Oh, but it's uh, honestly, I hope the person who lives there doesn't doesn't hear the story at yeah. all. So they <laughs> not know that there was a, a murder in the living room. But neither here nor there. Um, but so he flags down the cop car, uh -huh. you know. And so after that, that was in 1984 for about three years. South Bend was left with a cold case. They were scratching their heads. Yeah, I'm sure that when Harold Rowley was killed execution style in his York Road home in the Twickenham Hills area on the south side of South Bend, that the entire neighborhood was in shock. Next, we talk a bit about Harold Rowley's stepson, Gary Kesson, son of his wife, Rose Kesson and his possible involvement in some motives of why he might want his stepfather dead. And, and again, it, a lot of this sort of comes down to once you see the events at play here, uh -huh. then you sort of have to imply your own motive because there, there was ne there's never a rock-solid testimony that says no. Gary Kesson was upset and wanted his right. father killed. All, you just sort of have to look at the facts that, yep. okay, the... The estate of Harold Rowley was worth something because the, this bar was valuable, but there was a lot. There was there was tax liens on it. They had their liquor license yep. taken away. There was there was a lot of turbulent issues messy. where you Real could messy. you could see someone wanting to get rid of him in order so they could take on yeah. this property or they could, you know, utilize the insurance or do something to sort of get themselves out of because it was actually in. Uh, it was in Rose's name. Rose's name, right. It was, it was under like CTI Corp. It yep. was like the uh, uh, the technical the, it business It was the, name. the LLC or whatever that owned it. But another thing though, she, uh, you know, you have a stepson, you have a, a son whose mom is going through a bitter divorce mm -hmm. with Harold Rowley. So that could be another whole- Again, like I'm whole saying- whole other assumption you, that, hey, maybe sort of my have, mom's going through this hell with this guy. Maybe I want to- Knock them off, you know. Like I said earlier, with the, the domestic the, abuse, the anonymous thing, police officer and, yeah. who said that saw that his uh, he struck his son yep. in, in front yeah. of him. So you have this somebody who in childhood saw a character like Harold Rowley, mm -hmm. who again double sided in public. He has this this clean presentation, right. but you know has these these allegations of abuse and violence. And, you know, not necessarily the most responsible financially. Up to this point, all we know is that the colorful owner of Corby's Tavern, Harold Rowley, was killed in cold blood in his York Road home in South Bend. We know that he's had some run-ins over the years, including being shot at several times, was indicted for fraud, a couple of dozen liens against him. I'm not sure how many enemies that he made along the way. The only witness at all was the manager of Corby's, James Eichhorst, who literally stumbled upon the soon-to-be murder scene of his boss. He heard shots, then a car peeled away. We just talked about Harold's wife, Rose, and her son, Gary Kesson, and their possible involvement. But after all of that, the case went cold, 
until a few years later, a Chicago area police officer was implicated in another murder of a wealthy Chicago businessman. So this is what tipped off them fig- kind uh-huh. of linking uh, the Harold Rally murder to a man named Ronald Telez. Okay. So in 1986 in uh, Blue Island, Illinois. Okay. It's 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 in the uh, it's a southern it's a suburb of Chicago, mm-hmm. just south of the city limits. Okay. So it's considered in the Chicago land area, and uh, he was a he was a cop in Blue Island. He served some time in the military. Mm-hmm. Uh, st- started on the Blue Island Police Force in 1979. Okay. He was uh, involved with this woman who was the husband of a business owner. He was a vending machine operator. Uh-huh. His name was Archer Mueller. Yep. Uh, he was the owner of a Mueller Amusements Co. It was a yep. vending machine business. Very that wealthy was man, they said. Very too. wealthy. Yeah. yeah, his estate was worth up to about... Well, So I don't know his full net worth, but uh-huh. in one court record, it says that uh, his wife, Constantina Bronco Mueller, uh-huh. a.k.a. Connie Mueller, she's yeah. referred to a lot in my article and in court records, she stood to gain from his estate after he died about two to three million. Right. So that was 60%. 40, yeah, and that's that was 40 60 years ago too, so. Exactly. So I, 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 <laughs> yeah, even, be a lot more now. Yeah. I've even forgotten the piece to account for inflation. Yeah. So he was, he was quite a wealthy man. Yep. His vending machine business that was active in Chicago mm-hmm. was, you know, very successful. So Archer Mueller was discovered dead mm-hmm. by his twin brother in uh, 1986 in the safe of the walk-in safe of his business. But there was no sign of forcible entry. Mm-hmm. There was nothing really taken too much. You know, there was uh, some open safety deposit boxes, but nothing really that made it look like a directed robbery. Uh-huh. So the, the wife, Connie Bronco of Archer Mueller, uh, she had wanted a divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she was pushing for a divorce. So it was just this lover's quarrel situation. Yeah. So, and I, 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 as I refer to in the story, it's a classic femme fatale mm-hmm. type of situation. This whole story is like a spider web of rabbit holes to go down. And like I said in the intro, for a great narrative of the whole story, check out Dionne's article. This story has so many layers. And like I said at the beginning, it's just hard to dive so deep into each one of them. But he gets a lot deeper with the different twists and turns. However, I do want to summarize a bit here. Long story short, the Blue Island police officer, Ronald Telez, conspired with Connie Bronco to kill her husband, Chicago business owner Archer Mueller. Her father, John Bronco, had some connections to organized crime, and he actually convinced her to turn herself in. From there, the feds convinced John Bronco to wear a wire and meet with Ronald Telez to build evidence toward the Mueller case. They figured since Telez had talked about wanting to be a hitman, that he'd open up to somebody with some ties to organized crime. And he did. He admitted to killing Archer Mueller in cold blood. But also... Telez admits and shares details to the Mueller case, but he also drops details Uh of the quote, a murder of a bar owner of a Corby's restaurant. Quote, restaurant. That was the way what he referred to it. Uh, In South Bend, Indiana, Uh in 1984. Yeah. And people's, you know, ears kind of perked up to that. Uh Specifically, there was one, it was actually, uh, from different accounts, there was a a journalist who was a, he was a radio journalist. Mm -hmm. WGN. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, big radio station in, in, in Chicago, huge, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah he, huge radio station. Yeah, thanks to him, uh-huh. he, you know, he picked up his phone, and he, you know, he called uh, uh, Trenery, Sergeant Trenery, who dropped okay. some quotes from uh, earlier in the piece. Yeah, and he he calls him and he says, you know, you might want to look into this cop. Mm-hmm. This might be a lead for you. And it was from there that they connected this yeah. Ronald Telez to the South, the South Bend, Bend murder. Harold Rowley. So then it asks, like, what, what, what sort of uh, enemies uh-huh. did Harold Ra- or did, uh, did yeah, what sort of enemies did Harold Rowley have? Why was there somebody who paid this man? This yeah. wasn't, you know, Ronald Telez wasn't a person who was just going to nope. drive and commute from Blue Island 
or Chicago all the way out to South Bend just on a whim. Mm-hmm. So it makes you think, okay, what, who put him up to this? Right, what were the right. circumstances surrounding his death? So the Blue Island police officer, Ronald Telez, not only admitted to the murder of the Chicago businessman, Archer Mueller, he also mentioned something about killing a bar owner in South Bend, Indiana. Earlier, we talked about Harold's stepson, Gary Kesson. Next, you'll hear why we never found out for sure about Gary's involvement. And you'll also hear yet another layer in this wild, wild case. So that also leads into... <laughs> Uh, the disappearance of Gary Kesson. Now, Gary Kesson went missing. About a year later. One year later. After Harold was killed. He was last seen alive on July 26, 1985. That's pretty much almost a year to the day. A year to the day, almost. It was July 31st, 1984. That's crazy. So he was last seen alive uh, by his Uh sister-in-law. So he was dropping off a copy of his uh, will and a farewell note to very, his nephew. Very weird. Very weird. So it was almost like he had this sense of yeah. he knew something was about uh-huh. to happen, <laughs> obviously from his actions. So in this will, he listed his heir and listed everything in his estate to Ronald Les. The weird. cop. Now, this yeah. was 1985. Uh-huh. It wasn't until 86 that the Archer Mueller murder happened. Okay. So in, in 1985, this person who he's draw, listing his heir to yeah. is just some innocent man, some guy uh-huh. that he's friends with. Absolutely. So also Rose uh, Rose Rowley Kesson, Rose Kesson uh-huh. Rowley and her son, Gary Kesson, they're from a town just outside of Chicago mm-hmm. as well, Orland Park. Okay. Orland Park and Blue Island are very close to each other. I see. So there's a connection between where yeah. Ronald Telez is from and where Rose and her son is from. Uh-huh. So Gary Kesson was last seen by his sister-in-law. He's dropping off a will and a farewell note. He knows something's about to happen. Right. Now, his car was found abandoned at O'Hare Airport uh-huh. about a month later in August. And the circumstances around his death are interesting because of his relationship to Ronald Telez. Okay. And that wasn't discovered until court testimony, I got court you. records. Um, in court records, it was revealed that uh, they were actually close friends. They knew each other. Really? Yes, they, they knew each other. Um, Imagine being Rose Kesson. Your husband, although somewhat estranged, is murdered execution style in your home. Then almost a year later to the day, your son, Gary Kesson, comes up missing, never to be seen or heard from again, his car being found at O'Hare Airport. We wrap it up over the next few minutes by talking about how we think we know what happened and why, but we really won't ever know for sure. Exactly. And now, now, Ronald didn't go to trial. He wasn't found guilty until, what, 1992? Two. Yeah, it wasn't so in 1992. Six, eight years after the murder. Yeah, so in 1987, uh-huh. he, you know, he uh, he was sentenced to life for the Archer Mueller murder. For the Chicago, the Mueller murder. So that right. w- and, and that was a sensationalized trial in uh-huh. the Chicago area there because you know it was it was a murder for hire plot. Yeah, it was the police officer, yeah. a, a wealthy businessman, was, it was a, a famous brand that was known in the Chicago area. Exactly, exactly, and you know, just yeah, ex cop, uh-huh. murder, you know, millionaire business owner. It was a right. very sensational yeah. headline so that so that was you know big there so he got sentenced for that but because of these other details mm-hmm. they went back retroactively and brought him to St. Joe County and right. tried him at St. Joe County Court correct and pretty expressly they found him guilty yeah. but that wasn't until w- once they brought him to trial it, mm-hmm. it was a pretty you know quick trial Cutting but trial. it wasn't until 1992 Isn't that crazy that they were able Eight to years later. piece together yeah. all of this information And they had to wait. They wanted to wait. The prosecutors in South Bend wanted to wait until the whole um, appeals and all that stuff was done with the Mueller case in Chicago. Yeah. Once that was done, they disrupt that. Nope. But here in South Bend, Indiana, the um, two of the ex girlfriends testified here. Mm. And like you had mentioned earlier about the ex girlfriend, about how he brought the hat, gloves, knapsack, rented a hotel room, drove to Corby's and York Road. That came from one of the girlfriends. Yeah. Then there was also. The gentleman you mentioned 
the 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 with mob ties, John Bronco, right? Yeah, John Bronco. He testified here in South Bend. Yeah, he's yeah, he was a uh, that, and then he what you had said earlier about the wire. That's mm-hmm. what he had said here in the court case in South Bend. So yeah, they Isn't had to, they had to run it through to just get this separate conviction. So he was already serving life and Absolutely. would have served life, but it was sort of the the symbolic yep, closure. gesture of closure. Yep. And but unfortunately, all throughout that trial, he did claim his innocence uh-huh. you know he never so there was there's never fully like i said a motive where it's yeah so yep. you know this disgruntled son he felt this sort of way about his father it was never any of that you sort of nope. have to put these pieces together yourself um and yeah it, it's uh it was actually so the the, the new corby's establishment yeah so during after the murder the the Corby's was just in a state of limbo uh-huh. because, like I said, the the the, the LLC CTI mm-hmm. Corp mm-hmm. behind Corby's Tavern was in Rose's name. Mm-hmm. So after he died, it sort of fell into this limbo. Because and Harold was, Raleigh's his, dad his was arguing with Rose on who owns it. It was a mess. And then also just the financial state that it was in before yeah. that, with all of the liens, all the liens and all of the controversies around God. it. It ended up just being closed. It was done. It yeah. was closed. It was done. And so they, uh, when they were filming Rudy, uh-huh. being that Corby's is just intertwined with like the history and tradition mm-hmm. of South Bend and Notre Dame, with just you know being such a hot spot, uh-huh. they were left without a place to film these scenes mm-hmm. in Corby's. And then there was the the cabin cork, yeah, on so, the Sal and Niles Avenue, yeah. and which is now where the Corby's uh-huh. Irish pub sits today. Yep. So they were shooting the scenes there. And, you know, hearing from people from living in South Bend at the time that there was just that buzz around the area. Yeah. And, like, they were shooting the movie there. Uh-huh. We kind of, you know, brought some some energy to that site. And then they kept the name. How they smart. Kept, they kept the signs up, huh? You know, it's just, you know, yeah. natural natural advertising. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. It is. It is. The, the last p- chapter yeah. of the article, I titled it Closure because yes. I tried to somehow put a a bow Bow on this you know i try to tie these loose ends in some way because even though there's there's so much that's out there whether Uh it be a south bend tribune archive a chicago tribune archive different other local newspapers some court records Mm -hmm. some other court documents there's only there's only enough to just provide this the skeleton of a timeline of what happens but the true intentions and the true motives of Mm -hmm. these crimes of passion Again, you have sort of have to put together, but you, you the the main structure of it is is you have the this cop uh-huh. who it was sort of like a widow maker for hire. He has this pattern yeah. of of these these of women going uh-huh. through a divorce. There being bad blood in these situations, mm-hmm. there being money involved, there being a mm-hmm. businessman involved. He was a character who all throughout the article you can see. Uh, he's a man who romanticizes that life yeah. and organized crime. Yep. A person who's sus- susceptible to that, who has enough uh-huh. experience in the military and in police to he's be dangerous. able to... Yeah, like he said, uh, he said right here, there's a quote. Um, he said, you're involved in a shooting. It's better than sex. You can't sleep for two or three days. The badge, it's you. He was an, ingen- uh, an adrenaline junkie. Yes. He was addicted to that life of being a cop, uh-huh. the, the negative aspects of yep. it, and he romanticized that criminal life. Absolutely. You know, and got linked, yes. you know, from this sh- sensational Chicago trial of Archer mm-hmm. Mueller to South Bend. And mm-hmm. who would have known if, or, or who, who, who wouldn't, we would never know exactly oh. how this case would have ended up right. if... Archer, the Archer Mueller situation didn't happen, or if the you WGN, or even if it did happen, and then the WGN reporter didn't even call, here, decided to call. Know? He took his I lunch mean, break. Like, he could have just forgot. Yeah. He could have just been like, "Hey, maybe they'll figure it out." And it's crazy, you know, it's it's just the 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 small thread of yes. him him not even saying, "Oh, I you know I I killed Harold Rally this and that." He just said, "You know, Corby's Tavern, yeah. South Bend." That yeah. was that was just enough. All you for them to to hey, what's what's what was going on over here back right. in nineteen eighty four. Right. So it's a bit of uh there's it's like this 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 ghost that sort mm. of like haunts over this story where you, it's there's this mystery to it. There's That's these true. facts that are there. There's this yeah. there's these all these 
newspaper records that, uh-huh. that tell the story that just sounds like you, you don't even believe it. It tells it, but it doesn't tell it. Yeah. What's, it's pointing to Gary Kesson as being the one to have arranged this. Yeah. And all reports yeah. say that he was the one who paid him the money. Mm-hmm. He's the one who had a lot of contact with mm-hmm. it. So I wouldn't say that it was a situation like with Connie Bronco, where yes. she was the one who was having this relationship Absolutely. with him, puts him up to it. It was more so passionate, like, hey, I can take the care of this for mm-hmm. you. This sort of seemed to be like, okay, he they're friends. He they're both of these this you know these two towns, yeah. Orland Park and Blue Island. And hey, you know, I'll, I'll pay you ten thousand yeah. dollars to you know kill this you know, dad who's got some stepdad is might may or may not have money. He's an asshole to my mom. <laughs> and knows? another another big mystery is again the disappearance of Gary Kessen is. <laughs> Cop, he was never tried. Ronald Tellez uh-huh. was never tried mm-hmm. for the 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 disappearance or murder of mm-hmm. Garrickson. There was never there was never a body discovered. Nothing. So no. it, it's he's tech, it's technically still a disappearance. Crazy. But authorities do believe that Tellez killed him. And then mm-hmm. there's uh, there's three wooded locations around that area uh, that they believe yeah. that it could be because Tellez on the tape had mentioned three locations. He doesn't say okay. Gary Kesson's name, but he dropped some hints yeah. that could believe he got rid of somebody that was around that same time Insane. and it, and again like i said it, it begs more questions of was ronald les trying to just tie a loose end was yeah. he again get cold feet this person put me up to it let me get rid of them uh-huh uh, but at the same time the will and testament is which listed is to weird him. so i i i found yeah. these details but there's still these questions that you have uh-huh. of, of what those last moments were like when Gary Kesson who from all accounts was anxious in these mm. last moments I mean he what what person writes up their will Nobody. who's having a good day you know, you're not, <laughs> yeah you're Ronald Cubs something. just won let me write a will <laughs> exactly you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah but, that is uh, insane so the the circumstances around his death it's like it's a mystery, but now it's like you're yeah. like, oh yeah, of course, Ronald to let's kill this guy. Of course. It's, good. it's like obviously, yeah. but w- was it just like, all right, all right, he he's is, is it's like in a, in Goodfellas when De Niro starts noticing that every he starts getting paranoid, starts yes. killing yeah. everybody who's involved Absolutely. in the With Lufthansa, the Lufthansa. Heist. yep, yep, yep. So it's like, is he did did Gary Kesson show up in a fur coat one day and he's like, yeah. <laughs> like the scene in Goodfellas, yeah. like, yeah, take that off, you're, you're, the money. you're doing, you're, Drawing you're, attention. you're riding too hot, uh huh. So those circumstances around his death is still a mystery right but the facts are there of his relationship to this cop who was convicted of the murder of his stepfather Mm. that is confirmed yes yes what's also confirmed is the the testimony of this girlfriend saying the quote large sum of money he paid and then another inmate of telez years later who said he had bragged about being paid ten thousand dollars So Which is crazy. those are those those are you know, just the facts, and you sort of you have to put it together yourself. Right, right, right. Man, what do you think in today's world, where with social media, with Facebook, Twitter, and all that, what what, what would you think would happen in, in today's world if something like that would happen at a very popular noted bar? It's interesting because I feel like there would be a lot of hyper focus in the moment, but at the same time, with the way social media is now. There's like this uh, collective attention span uh-huh. that's short. So I feel like for a couple months, it'd be like, yo, hashtag who killed Mer- you know, right. Corby's. And then a, a month later, people stop caring, yeah. unfortunately, and move on to the uh-huh. next thing. So I I think that, and it, but it could help just with just the, the spread of information. That tips could too. And everything. I yeah. mean, there's, you know, Facebook communities, yeah. subreddits. There's a lot of just different local uh-huh. avenues on, on the internet that would probably help the communication right, but right right it would be interesting because i think it would be it would be more sensationalized you know people i feel like it definitely you wouldn't just have to before it's just you know read it in the paper you know Correct. word around the street what happened but now if you see it on your timeline mm-hmm. I that's think true it'd be, too it'd be more conversation Bar owner shot execution style and hell even nowadays with ring cameras and all that stuff i mean it may not even they might have tagged those killers in the in that second 
Because I'm not sure how many, you know, like high school students in 1984 are like going to just, hey, let me get the paper. Let me just read this exactly. on my, my lunch break in between True. You know, third hour True. and just like yes. read the paper and <laughs> keep up to date. Like, oh, Qu- Harold Rally. Yeah. A, a, a state is up for auction, like following this really Lean this complex Lean placed case. on Corby's And tavern. that's the thing is they, the, it, the, <laughs> the juicy details yeah. of this whole story didn't get revealed into the Mueller case. So exactly. 84, yeah. August of 84, owner is dead. What happened? Nobody knows. So, and, and so something people just kind of forgot. That's true. The calendar turns to 85. Yep. Then it turns to 86. Then yep. they then no, South. I mean, you know, nobody's really paying attention about what's going on in this this Archer Mueller case uh, because it's just no, you know, it's, it's not Bay, related. It's so Chicago. then 1987, after the FBI is doing their investigations, wiretaps. Yep. So you have a good three, four years later that they get the tip from the journalist and have this very loose thread. Uh huh. And from all accounts. Uh, South Bend police were very tight-lipped with the details of right. the execution. So it right. was just called an execution, a slang, a quote, professional hit, but mm. the details of it were really sparse. Right. So even if you were trying your hardest to follow this case for five years, you know, you're not hearing anything. Yep. You're not really yeah. hearing a word. That's true. That's true. So yep. it's, 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 it's tough. So I feel like that's why it's kind of lost to history yeah. and again that's really what made me want to focus in on the Corby's murder uh-huh. because it's a story that's lost to time in it South is. Bend you know, it is. not many people at all really even if they heard about this murder they didn't really know the true details and it all just those gets, tentacles exactly it, it, it just it's this this web yes. that just spirals in all these different locations and tangle and then you're like oh you got this this crooked cop then you have this crooked lawyer then you have this armored car robbery then you have oh this these characters who are in scorsese films yeah. and then you have a oh the overthrow of suriname a south american <laughs> nation I, I that i'm not even familiar with it. I, I, I'm, I, it's crazy man but all right well hey that was good i appreciate you coming sure, on and, sure. and uh um i think the folks will be interested in it i think it's intriguing as heck yeah i appreciate you having me on and yeah you could find the story uh i could the, the midwest connection midwest uh, connection is the title of the it's story it's a play on you know the french connection yeah. but also it, it what's what connects our town of south uh-huh. Bend to this this world of vice this world of crime this interesting little story yeah of absurdity uh-huh. that this was a small little connection. So the Midwest yeah. connection on the familypsm.com slash source. I'll have the, the link in the show notes and I'll be sure to share it on the social media as well. So thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Round the Bend Now and Then. An extra special thanks to Diodene Bayangana for coming on and helping to share the tragic story of Harold Rowley and the events surrounding his death. Again, Check out the article, Midwest Connection, that he wrote detailing the story at familypsm.com slash source. The link is in the show notes. And while you're there, check out all of his articles and his brother's work as well. There's a variety of articles, videos, pictures, music for you to check out. Please be sure to follow us on all of our socials, download, like, or subscribe on all of the podcast apps, including YouTube, and share the show with others. Join us again next time to learn more about South Bend and Mishawaka's now and then.